I want women like to see what a life without children can look like. I'm 39 and I'm child free. Young women around the world are embracing their decision to live voluntarily child free and are sharing their reasons through social media as a way to destigmatize their lives, including the hashtag child free movement trend on social platform TikTok. A life without children. It's a choice young women have been making for decades and whose popularity is growing with younger generations. The reasons women make this decision range from financial security to overall wellness, physical and mental. I want women who don't want to have kids to have an example of what your life can look like. Yeah, not a lot going on around here lately. Let's just see what's behind this door. No, <laughs> is there a better door around here maybe? A recent study from Statistics Canada found the number of children per woman has been declining for more than a decade, and a third of Canadians aged 15 to 49 do not intend to have any children. Despite the seemingly growing trend of child-free women, they are still faced with varying levels of backlash and stigma. Behold, a day in the life of a childless woman. The point is to make you feel good about being an aging, deeply unlikable woman who never had kids. Narc women who choose not to have children are often labeled selfish, told they don't know what they want or that they will change their minds eventually. These attitudes not only occur in their personal lives, but in interactions with medical professionals as well. To maintain their child-free lives, some young women seek out permanent forms of birth control. However, many are met with extreme reluctance or nearly immediate denial to the procedures because of the idea that they might change their minds. While these comments are not always made with malicious intent, days, months, and even years of hearing them coupled with a lack of medical professionals willing to help them can take away a woman's sense of self and autonomy. I mean, what if I don't want to live the way you live. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Everybody wants this. Megan Parker is a 26-year-old child-free illustrative graphic designer in Calgary living with her long-term partner. Parker's child-free life started sooner than most at age 14, after she was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, for which many of the drug treatments can be harmful to internal organs. Going on to biologics when you're in juvenile care is a little rough on the body and particularly the reproductive system, so they have to have the conversation with you that's like, we're going to put you on treatment, but it might mean that you won't have kids, or if you want to have kids eventually, you'll have to like go on a whole transition plan, and even then, like it could be the best nine months of your life and you would go into remission and it would be heavenly or it's going to be the worst flare you've ever had. When she was faced with her options, she was happy to choose a life with no kids in favor of living her life with a healthy body. And even if she had had a different medical history, Parker says she would still stand firm behind her decision to live voluntarily child-free. There's just so much to life that I want to experience without having to worry about like a little mini me. Um, that I don't think I want to give up regardless of who I'm with or who, what treatment I'm on. And yeah, so I think the no kids route is comfy for me regardless. <laughs> Parker has been open about her choice with many people in her life and met with a lot of support. But there are still times when she is met with pushback from those that don't know her situation. At one point, she sought out birth control options to help manage the pain from her condition from a medical professional with no knowledge of her disability and was met with a less than supportive response. Having that conversation with just like a general practitioner who didn't know my history or didn't bother to look into my history um, was really awkward and very long-winded and it was like, well, why do you want to have a hysterectomy? Why do you want to do these things? It's like, I don't want kids. After years of hearing remarks like these, Parker finds them frustrating and says she's done with the dismissive and ignorant conversation. In Parker's eyes, every person is entitled to their own way of going about life, kids or no kids. A lot has changed in the last even just like 50 years. And I think that, you know, if women or people who are able to conceive want to preserve their autonomy and continue on with their career or explore the world or go to a bar every night after work, <laughs> <laughs> in a healthy way, of course. Um, like we should be able to choose that life for that life for ourselves.
While it can be difficult to find medical professionals willing to support young women in their goal of living child-free, there are some offices that believe a woman's right to her body trumps society's expectations of them. Dr. Fiona Matadal is a Calgary-based obstetrician-gynecologist at Chrysalis Obstetrics and Gynecology. With nearly 20 years in the field, Matadal has had her fair share of patients requesting forms of birth control in order to maintain their child-free lives. And she's noticing more and more patients coming to see her for this. Um, to prevent both slip here and a clip here. And I'm not sure if that necessarily reflects an increase in the desire for people to have a child-free life, or if maybe people are more comfortable asking the question or asking to see a gynecologist like myself and then coming to have that discussion. I think that has always been um, something that some people desire in life, but maybe it's more open uh, time that we can discuss it. The types of birth control clinics like Madadol's offer range from permanent procedures like bilateral salpingectomies or the removal of the fallopian tubes, to reversible options like the Morena IUD that's implanted in the arm. Matadol believes having access to these forms of birth control are crucial for women in today's society for several reasons. I believe that an individual should be able to control their reproduction and their own bodily autonomy, as we were talking about. Um, without different options, it excludes people from that ability to have an autonomous life. The more options we have, the better, because then that means that more people can protect themselves from an unplanned pregnancy. Unfortunately, several obstacles can prevent a child-free woman from achieving the life she wants, including requests for permanent forms of birth control often being turned down by medical professionals or a lack of support from their social circles. And these obstacles can have a lasting impression on the women encountering them. In my world working in reproductive and sexual health, I do see that sometimes women's reproductive choices are things that they're afraid to share with those around them, even their support networks. I've over the years noticed many women can't speak openly about reproductive choice because they fear the ramifications or losing, losing a friend over a choice that they've made. And I don't think that's okay. Matt et al. believes that the stigma surrounding child-free women, particularly about them being selfish, should be reflected back at their parental counterparts. We're saying that the usual is that a woman has a child. What is unselfish about that? From an environmental standpoint, uh, the more humans that are on this planet, the worse this planet is for its own health. So how is that? unselfish. Rather than going with that gut comment, this is a selfish choice, to put a mirror up and say, really, is your choice unselfish? Oh, yeah. Almost as an ode to unselfishness, Parker revealed a nagging curiosity she had about her own mother's life and the differences no children may have made. Callie, come here. Come here. My mom is very much like me and even though I'm very happy to be here, I sometimes I'm like, what would my mom have done had she not had me and my sibling? And like, what kind of career woman would she be? Would she have like traveled the world? Jelaine Parker had her first child, Megan, at 28 years old and Megan's younger sister five years later. I probably would have gone to uh, college or university for something different than what I initially had. I would have probably, I would have probably made a career change a lot sooner. My circle of friends would have been a lot different too, because, you know, at that time before kids, I was working in office settings. I knew lots of um, real estate agents and bankers, and I worked with lots of different lawyers. So that whole social thing would have been a lot different. Despite Jelaine's proud role as a mother, she says she will support Megan in any decisions she makes about having children, as long as she is happy with the life she's living. My life is actually super fulfilling and so much fun. And, you know, like for someone in their mid twenties, I haven't done too much world exploring. And this is usually the time that people start thinking about having kids and I, there's so many things that I'm doing 
that I couldn't do on a whim. And I love doing things on a whim and like being spontaneous and keeping things exciting. So. <laughs> Hi, can I have a kiss? Thank you. <laughs> For the Calgary Journal, I'm Ann Mayo.